So we're ready to keg the cider now. Um, what we need to do first be before we take that cider and rack it from a glass carboy into our stainless keg is I want to get all the air out of that keg. So in order to do that, I fill the keg with water and then I hook up a CO2 line to it and I blow all the water out of it, you know, displacing the water with carbon dioxide. And so there's no air for sure in there. Then that thing's totally ready to start filling with the cider from the bottle. Of course, I start bleeding off a little bit of the carbon dioxide. You'll see as the cider goes in. Um, then it's all good. As soon as it's carbonated, it'll be ready to drink. All right. So this is all, this keg's all been really well sanitized. And fill it with water. Right up to the top. Make sure it's seated nice and tight. Standard Cornelius keg. Got our CO2 bottle. All right, so the pressure's already up to probably about 12, tw uh, 20 PSI or so. Um, find the in on this keg, put that on there, and we might as well just use our racking tube and just blow that water out through the racking tube. And there it goes, and we'll just wait for it all to, to blow out of there. The racking tube and everything's been, been sanitized. So we've filled our keg now with CO2. We know that's all there is, is in there. There's no air at all, and we're ready to rack our cider into here. Well, let's go ahead and get the cider in, into the keg. Here it is in the carboy. Still got the airlock on, so I'm just going to pull that out. There it is. Done with that. Now, actually, uh, we're going to have to bleed off a bunch of CO2 off this keg because, of course, it's under quite a bit of pressure. It's not going to want to transfer into there. That's okay. Still a little tiny bit of positive pressure of CO2 in there. Cap on there. There it is. So uh, we're just about to start our racking. Of course, the racking tube and everything's full of, full of water. I want to purge that out. Uh, I want to get, get it full of cider. And I don't want to run the, run the water into my, my cider keg. So I have a second little keg here, just uh, for no, no reason other than to snap the fitting on to start running the cider right down the tube. Uh, as soon as I see the tubes full of cider, I take it off and I'll put it on the keg that we're actually using to, to fill with cider. So first thing I'm going to do, Toss the racking tube right in there. Don't have to worry, there's not much sediment in there at all, actually. It's pretty clear. So, take this guy up here, snap it on the out, and there she goes, cider. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit more amber colored. I saw the difference, the cider coming through, chasing the water out of the line. Now it's all ready to go. Make sure I get all the, enough of the CO2 out, and there she goes. You can actually see the level just coming down here, dropping down, the cider's racking real nice. Slowing down a little, so we're gonna bleed a little more CO2 off the keg. And there it goes. I am actually gonna prop the keg up here. There's just a tiny bit of sediment in there. Not enough to really cause any trouble, but might as well do it right. Instead of constantly coming and bleeding the CO2 off, I can just leave the, the um, gas valve on top of the keg door here open because, of course, the cider's going in. It's constantly pushing that CO2 out of the keg that's in there. There's no chance of any air getting back in there. And, uh, and the cider can make its way down uninhibited by any gas pressure in the keg. You can actually see how little sediment there is there. That might actually be some crystallized maybe malic acid or something. You get that sometimes in wine as well, some crystallized acids at the bottom. Um, it's just a little bit of sludge, and that's fine. We got our cap on the end of our racking tube, so we aren't pulling that across. Our rack is done. It's all in there. Take the line off. Now we've got a nice keg of about 12 liters worth of our delicious cider. Got my gas bottle here. I got the pressure cranked up to about 40 pounds. Turn on the main valve. Of course, 
our cider that we just, you know, we racked into this keg, the, the glass carboy itself had, had, was cold, it was in here, um, and, and that cider, of course, is now going to stay in the keg in this cold room. It's the perfect way to carbonate the cider um, because CO2 dissolves much, much better, much more quickly uh, in, in the cold, when the, when the liquid is cold. Um, so, all ready to go. There it is. A couple different ways we can, we can carbonate the cider. Um, we, we can crank up the CO2 really, really high if we like. These kegs are good to pretty high pressure, uh, over 100 pounds. But I'm just going to have the thing around 40 pounds and, and just leave it here for a couple days. Now, a lot of people, if they're in a hurry, you might, you might choose to uh, you know, shake the keg around a little bit to start you know, every few hours or something. You can carbonate it way more quickly, but I, I don't really care. Um, I'm going to leave it on for a couple days. I might give it a shake at some point, uh, give it some more CO2. And then uh, after a little while, I'll hook up a little tap to it and just have a little taste and see if I like the level of carbonation. If it needs more, I'll just, just go for another day or two or more, you know. All right, so the level of carbonation that you have in your cider is really up to personal preference. Uh, traditionally, English and French ciders are probably not carbonated to a really high degree, say, say as high as a lot of beer is carbonated. Uh, it's a more of a kind of a subdued carbonation. Still fine bubbles, you know, but it doesn't kind of gas you up like crazy. And also it allows you to taste the product a little bit better, I find. If it's really, really carbonated, that kind of stings your palate, anesthetizes your taste buds. Um, so I go a little bit more for, for that, that traditional character. Um, also, the degree of carbonation is kind of dependent, of course, on the temperature the cider's at, uh, how much pressure you have on of CO2 on the keg, and, uh, and how long you leave it, basically. So, so you, can, you can determine all those things uh, yourself when you when you go to carbonate it, um, I go for the I go for the traditional kind of uh, subdued carbonation. So we actually snap our fitting on the Cornelius keg, of course, on the out. That's the, uh, that's the location where the spear goes right down to the bottom. So we want to transfer into the bottom of the keg. Uh, 